Power, Sex, Money starts in 30 seconds. Welcome to Power Sex Money. Hello family, welcome to Power Sex Money. And today we are going to talk about Christianity and politics. What is the role of a Christian when it comes to political leadership? You've heard it said, politics is a dirty game. Really? Should we just pray and hope for the best? Or oh, we can pray and move our feet as well. Join me as I have a conversation with Becky and Agatha, who are standing for Member of Parliament right after this. It's Parsex Money, and I'm here with my friends, um, Agatha and Becky, and we are going to be talking about Christians in politics. Well, what a wonderful conversation. I'm looking forward uh, to learning, but also to know who you are, why you are standing. You are Christians, my goodness. You know, Christians are not supposed to be there. I'm kidding. <laughs> you are supposed to be right yeah. there. So let me begin with Agatha. Let us know who you are mm. and why are you standing for um, MP for Kayunga? All right. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share. Um, my name is Agatha Nalubwama, born and raised in Kayunga District. Right. First of all, I'm so glad that I got this opportunity to express myself in the political arena. Mm -hmm. How I started, um, through my school, I've always been a leader. I have been uh, through Macquarie University. I have a degree in procurement and supply chain management right. from MOBS. I also have an entrepreneurship certificate and also school of community leadership certificate. Ah. How I came to know how to deal with uh, uh, Christianity in politics was through a total church School of Community Leadership. That's very good. I am also the founder of Naomi Elderly Outreach Uganda. Okay. And through that, I was looking for the voice of the elderly people. Their representation in the years back has been very low. Mm -hmm. And that is what of the th one of the things that um, drove me into politics, because I was like, how am I going to be uh, helping these elderly people through this NGO yes. without engaging in politics. Right. This is how I got the vision and how I started because I knew that where the voice is is in politics. Right. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. So you are driven by this desire to serve some elderly <coughs> women in yes. your community. You didn't tell us what you're standing for. Just let us know once again. What are you standing for? I am standing for Kayunga District Woman MP. On the NRM ticket. Right. Yes. NRM ticket. Yes. Colored yellow. Yes. Right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, please. Yeah. Let us know who you are and your journey towards standing yes. for political leadership. Yeah. Thank you for hosting me. Today I'm excited to be here. That's right. Namguanya uh, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Robina. I know you guys always call, call me Becky, but uh, that's my full name, and I'm also called Mrs. Woro okay. because I'm a married woman. That's very good. Yeah, so, um, Namguanya, Rebecca, why am I in this space? One of the things that uh, has encouraged me, of course, me as, uh, as Becky, I've been in leadership. Right. I've been in leadership through my, throughout my life. I'm that kid who is always at the front of doing things. I've been involved in uh, student politics at university. And oh yes, I'm also the, the woman, the woman uh, leader in my community on the LC level. Where uh, what's where, church in Gina is located. <laughs> yes, so you're yeah. my chairman. Yes, I'm your chairman. <laughs> I'm your woman chairperson. All right. Yes, yeah, so, but um, yes, I'm contesting for the Kampala woman member of parliament. And um, yes, I'm a teacher by profession. I'm a political scientist. I hold a master's degree in social sector planning and management. But how did I find myself in this space? I thank God for Watoto Church because Watoto Church has given me an opportunity to grow as a leader, to know what it means to be a leader. Mm. Uh, I know that, uh, Pastor, you know that I have served, served in the ministry for 
a long time in the neighborhood ministry. Right. And it was during that time that I realized that people have real needs. Mm -hmm. And these real needs are supposed to be addressed by people who care. Right. So I, I, I realized that we need to do something about it. You know that um, as, as church, God has called us to influence. Mm -hmm. But I also realized that uh, we have the influence, but we also need the power to be able to influence at that level. Okay. Mm. For example, when you look at, um, at our neighborhood, our healthcare system, needs somebody who needs to influence at that level. Right. Did you know that we can have a health insurance policy mm. as Ugandans? Mm. We need to be able to send people in the political space that understand what it means to serve. Right. Yeah. We are living in a space where the leaders, the political leaders that we send into the higher levels of influence and power are kind of selfish kind of don't care about the people that they're representing. Right. I, I am coming in this space with a heart, to, with a heart of a servant. Right. The mm. Lord told us that you, whoever wants to be a leader amongst you must be a servant. Right. So I'm coming into this space to serve the people of Kampala and, of course, this nation. Right. Because I realize that if we don't, then mm. we are leaving that space for the people who shouldn't be there. And then mm. after that, we start saying, what are our leaders doing? What are our leaders? And yet we are the leaders That's right. for such a time as mm. this. That's very good. Yes. And uh, I, love, I love what you're saying because uh, leaders are there to serve. Mm. And uh, they, are, they are sent by their people mm -hmm. to serve in that category so yes. they can influence some good development and change. Yes. Yes. Mm. Now, of course, we've heard it said many times that mm. leadership, sorry, politics is a dirty game. Mm. And um, I don't know, I, I don't know if you share that mindset. But the way I sense from your conversation, mm -hmm. you don't think it's a daddy game. Mm. You think as Christians we need to be there. So um, you've talked about the needs yes. um, in uh, Kampala that you're there to serve, mm -hmm. and um, you've talked about the needs in Kayunga. You talked about the elderly. You want to represent them. You want to make sure they have a voice mm -hmm. at the national space. Um, I just want to ask you, because you Christians, first and foremost, mm. what are some of the challenges that you have faced that, you know, in this journey uh, towards leadership? Agatha, are there any challenges that you've faced yes. that, um, that, you know, influence your faith? Mm. You know, can you share with us? Wow, oh, okay. Um, first of all, uh, I'll start with my district, Kayunga district, being an originating district from Mukono, yes, the, uh, the other bigger one. Yes, and um, if I know, if at all, I know everyone knows this, that the district of Mukono is majorly into witchcraft. Now, as a Christian, I find that there's a lot of darkness in these two districts. I know maybe even elsewhere, but particularly where I'm going to serve, I find that there is need for the light. Right. And that is why I'm engaging in politics, because the people who are in power or the leaders are neglecting the light, right. bringing the light into the district through their values, through bringing back hope into these people, through showing them the way. And um, one of the challenges I've found that is most of the people actually believe in this. You see, one, two things, while we were in the primaries, I got so many concerned people calling me and actually diverting me towards that direction. But I told them, no, we, we have a living God. They were like, for you, you to know? win the primaries, yes. you must go into witchcraft. Yes. Let's go and ask the gods to that help. That is it. They were actually telling me, my daughter, yeah? we, we, we need this win. But this is the way. I'm like, no, please. Let us trust God right. to do his will. Yes. And of course, he did his will when I won the election. Wow, but so through all this, it's not only witchcraft, there are other challenges of, um, I'll say literacy levels are quite high. Right. You go to the people, you explain to them your agenda, but most of them have been diverted in who should be the right leader. A few of them can actually uh, go a ahead with your manifesto. That's why we're finding uh, politicians 
being able to give out some handshakes, eh? yes. Do, doing this and that. That's bribing, right? The, the bribery, yes. which is okay, which is mostly taking back the people who are actually rightful leaders, because they don't have the handshakes, because they are, they don't have that much to give, and then the right, the wrong leaders will come in power. Even the Bible says it: when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. 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 Mm -hmm. So we are lacking that. But it takes, uh, it takes one to stand up yes. and to be able to share vision and to trust in God. And then the Lord will help because through my uh, School of Community Leadership course, mm -hmm. we, we were taught that when you are called, the Lord will give you the strategies to use. You will not be uh, running your own race. Right. Therefore, you need to be very, very, very careful to listen to the Holy Spirit to listen to what the Lord is telling you to do this or that and That's trust him just like I take this back to the Bible where Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Joshua, all these people had a direction of God right. and this is where we are right now, politics. It's, it's very good, mm. very good. I, I love the fact that when you are trying to be pushed, you are being pushed towards compromising your yes. standards, uh, you stood your ground and we've seen success, you won the uh, the, the primaries. primaries. Mm. Becky, um, um, we are almost in January. I think we have about two months to go to the elections, but yep. I believe you faced some challenges. <laughs> what has your journey been like so far? Uh, well, I'm an independent candidate. And by just mentioning independent candidate for the whole of Kampala, right. that gives you already a glimpse of what <laughs> the challenges that I'm facing. Right. The politics of ideology, where we need to address real issues that mm. are affecting our people, that are affecting this nation at the moment is out of the window. One of my biggest challenge, challenges has been the monitor, monetization the of, the, of the elections. Yes. If I told you that on my agenda, apart from the healthy care system that right. I think that Ugandans deserve uh, a health insurance policy, right. that we deserve to create employment through home-based industries, that we need to look into our education system to make sure that it addresses the, the real needs of the, the people. Needs, yes. yeah. And uh, when you look at what is happening, when you start talking about such issues, people don't want to know. People mm. tell you, before you tell me anything, anything. How much money are you going to give me? You can imagine, I was just telling one of my, some of my coordinators this morning, that even though I decided to give 1,000 shillings to every person in Kampala, it would cost me billions of money, even 500. So one of the, my biggest challenges for me, it has been the politics is for sale. And that limits or prohibits us as a nation to bring the right kind of leaders right. into the space to be able to serve this mm. nation. Yes. So we need to look into that. It's a prayer point yes. that we need to address. And then secondly... So is just, I know you're going... For, I just want to just punctuate what you've just said. Yes. You said there's a culture in our politics, yes. in our leadership culture in Uganda, yes. where people want money. Mm. It's mm. bribing. No money, no votes. No money, no votes. Mm. Yes. Even though you have the right solution. Yes. Mm. Wow. Yes. We so need... people, are, the, the, the votes are for sale. And mm. we are coming into this space and saying, no, look here, we have real issues. There is a space I went to into, uh, in, in Banda. And the leaders, all the leaders told me, you know, Rebecca, you cannot talk to people without money. I told them, I'll give them a skill. But I cannot give them money. Even, even if I have the money, I cannot give it to them because that is not sustainable. Right. Mm. And as I went into, it was a church, there were about 100 people. And as I talked to them, I asked them, what is your real need? They told me, I told them, your leaders told me you need money. They said, no, for us, we need a skill. Wow. So what am I saying? We need to change the mindsets that, that culture. Mm. of the yeah. culture yes. of the people yes. so that we are able to address the real issues that are affecting us. And of course, the other thing is my name. My What's name. wrong with your name, Rebecca? It's a beautiful <laughs> name. It's biblical. It's biblical, but not in Kampala. 
Okay. And we are also coming into this space to say, no, this is a good name. I wanted to come in one of the parties that I want to mention. Right. I and uh, I, I think I'm a good candidate. I am the best candidate that Kampala has to offer. <laughs> yes, no, Pastor, don't laugh. This is I am the best. If you look on the candidates that are available, I'm the best candidate. But I remember that when I went to, to this party and had a chat with them, they told me that name Rebecca cannot sell because Kampala belongs to Muslims. Wow. You know, that's what they told me. I told them, but why, we shouldn't choose leaders on the basis of their faith. Yeah. We are choosing leaders on the basis of their capability yes. and what they have, to, their ideology, yes. you know, and the experience maybe. Right. They said no. They, 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 they told me, you see, Noob has brought a Muslim. They say, Enyarem has brought a Muslim. So and so has brought a Muslim. And now you, Rebecca, what, what are you going to offer? You are Christian. And we are saying no. We need, as believers, we need to get into this space yes. and be able to influence for the kingdom. Right. We are the children of light. Right. And because we are the children of light, wherever we are, we are ambassadors yeah. for the kingdom. Yes. We need to get in there and show people what it means to be a leader that is ready to serve, the servant leader. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord said that if you choose to be a leader, whoever wants to be a leader amongst mm -hmm. you, Serve. Must serve. Mm -hmm. Should be a servant. So as Rebecca, I'm getting into this space to just give an exemplary leadership of yeah. what it means right. to be a leader that is ready to serve and influence. That's and right. by the way, uh, Pastor, I'm very excited to share with you that uh, I looked at my manifesto and you can't imagine. Over five points of what is on my man manifesto, as I've talked about them, they are already laid out by His Excellency, the President. I can't, even me, when I touch myself, I'm like, eh. Did he copy even, you? you copy even, even early childhood development is on top of the agenda, you know? So we are here to influence. Right. Whatever happens, we are here to influence. We are here. My desire and deep, my hope and deep desire is that can we look at the politics that will be able to build our people, that will mm. be able to show that, you know, the Lord said that we are the children of light. So can we be the children of light? And the Lord has called us into this place. Yes, we, as church, we already have the influence. Right. You know, I'm, a, a, um, I'm one of the leaders in my community, in the political space. But we need the power. We need to get into parliament and allocate resources accordingly. We need to, do, what are the challenges that are facing people in Kampala? We need to go there and represent them well. Right. You know? We need to do the right legislation. Right. You know? And who is going to do it? Us, people of the kingdom. People of the light. People of the kingdom. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rebecca, for that. Yes. Um, I remember, I don't know which parliament it was, um, where the MPs, I mean, opposition, uh, the government, they were all in there, went, came to their package. Yes. The media was shut out so that they can allocate to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what has happened to our leadership. Yes, well. That's a culture we're talking about yes. that needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, leaders, mm. you know, there's a book by a gentleman called Simon Sinek. Say, mm. He says, leaders eat last. Okay? Mm -hmm. But for our leaders, the current mm. leadership, and we see it not only in Uganda, but around the world, is mm. leaders want to eat, eat first. first. Yes. And yet, as you are saying, mm. and from the words of Jesus, Leaders are there to serve. Whoever wants to be a leader must serve. Mm. And that is critical. You are there to serve. Mm. So um, I want to come back to Agatha just a little bit. Um, there is a couple of things you, you told me earlier, mm. that you, three things that you are, <clears throat> want to bring to Kayunga okay. to serve the people of Kayunga. Can you just mention what those three things are? Okay. Um, mainly Kayunga district is 80% agriculturalists. Being in a rural area, I found that most of us could make more, but most of them are doing it on a lower level of subsistence. Mm. What I'm looking at is that we need a solution. Kayunga, as well as Uganda at large, mm. can become a food basket. A food basket, that is food security. Yes. In the entire country, we can be able to feed the neighboring nations, like you saw in, during COVID times. Yes. You know, 
food is a necessity. Right. But what has happened is that the prices and um, the, the depreciating prices mm. due to the laws of demand and supply, mm. the rudimentary methods, you know, so the people who are trying to do some farming are not getting not, value. Yes. So you want to bring yes. something to that. They are not doing they're not getting enough value out of it and mainly I could tell it to the poor system or lack of a system, an organized system of agriculture in Uganda. Mm. So what I'd like to do in my district of Kayunga First of all, is to organize these farmers into groups. We used to have cooperatives. We used to have unions where people could be able to get a price that can help them get these um, negotiations right yes. for their produce. So I'd like to see that in, the, in, in a way that is organized, we can have the cooperatives back mm -hmm. with a union. People can be able to benefit from their agriculture. Right. And therefore, we'll be having the food security in Uganda and right. at Kayunga itself. The storage facilities, just like my colleague has said this, I found out that also post-harvest handling mm. is what is making most farmers lose out. Mm. We need to have trainings in that right. with the storage facilities being set up this right. time around such that if a price is low or unfavorable, someone can store their product and in a very, very, right. the rightful way with the right temperatures mm. and be able to get a better price Basically, you, uh, what is guiding you, because I'm establishing this principle, mm. the reason both of you are standing, basically, mm. is you've seen a problem in the community. Yes. With the people. Yes. And as leaders, let us find mm. solutions. Mm. And you're like, I want to go into political leadership mm. so that I can be able to serve my people. Yes. As opposed to people serving their leaders, yes, which is um, a wrong mindset mm. uh, that I see all around, not only in Africa, it's all around mm. the world, where leaders get into leadership and it's all about them. That's true. And my prayer is that when you get there, when, okay, when mm. you get there, it does not, because mm. I've seen some people who mm. begin well, and, they? and when they get into, yeah. and the privileges and the perks come, they forget the people. Mm. And as Christians, again, we are there to serve people. And I just want this just to be heard and understood. We are servant leaders. We are there to serve people. Yeah. And as you serve people, God is going to mm. reward you for your service. Mm. But the key thing is serving people, which I think is, should be the call for leadership in any place. Now, I want to go to a place, I'm saying, when you become leaders, now I'm going to go to an if um, if you lost, because it's possible, if you don't go through, mm. uh, because, um, again, I want to set you up for this, because mm. there is this wrong gospel, that well, because you're a Christian, everything is going to go well for you. It's not mm. true. <laughs> you know, things didn't go well for Jesus. I know. He served people, he mm. loved them, and they killed him. Mm. You know? Mm. At the end of the day, if this does not go the way you, um, you anticipate, yeah. what will your response be? Okay, thing. I'll stay among the community members because that's where I've established my businesses yes. in the entrepreneurship sector and I'll be able to work with the farmers. Rightly, with or without a voice, I believe all my agenda can go ahead. Yes, and um, that will not change because besides politics, um, with politics, it's better but besides politics, it can still work through the systems that will be organized, the businesses, yes. because it will be bringing money this time around. Right. You just organize the groups, ensure that you have the market, because as an entrepreneur, you have markets that are so big that you cannot afford to supply alone. Yes. But when you're working with big numbers of people, mm. while they are organized, then you can be you can do something great. You can bring the development still to your district. Right. I'm willing to go ahead with the people That's very because good. the first agenda was not to go into there for the money, but to help the people get the development. So basically, win or no winning, your vision is still there it and still you are stands. going to still serve people. Yes. That's amazing. Becky, you're the oh. best MP, you, as you told us. <laughs> you know, what if things don't go your way? Well, Pastor, uh, first of all, um, I want... Uh, to just share with you and mm -hmm. of course the viewers that uh, yes I'm promoting the health insurance policy mm -hmm. that is going to be very key and uh, I'm making sure that people in Kampala and Uganda if it is happening in Rwanda 
if you're in the city, when you're in Rwanda, you feel like, God, I wish I was, I wish I was a Rwandese. Because when you're sick and you're supposed to pay maybe 100,000, you'll pay 10,000. And then because of that collective responsibility, the, 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 the insurance will pay the 90,000. Right. So that's what I want to promote. Mm. What that's, if you don't go through and you can't promote that yes. as, a, as a, an MP? Influence. Okay. It is called influence. Okay. A leader, uh, politics or no uh, politics. Or no politics. Mm -hmm. God has called us to influence. Okay. And yeah. the most important thing is to know the right players. Okay. I still mm. believe that as a social sector planner, one of my duties in my profession is to make sure that we work together with the medical doctors, the medical fraternity, right. with, the, with the key leaders in parliament, mm. with the key leaders in government, yeah. and say, look here, we need this health insurance policy passed. Even when it comes to ECD or early childhood development that I'm pushing for yes. the most vulnerable, yes. I already sit with the a, with a NGO forum for early childhood development. So I still think that I will work with the Minister of Education, I'll work with the different players to make sure that uh, the most vulnerable people have early learning opportunities even when I'm not in Parliament. As a business owner, of course, I am a business <laughs> owner. I'm an innovator. Yes. Mm. Okay? I'm already in this space. I am a member of the Business Network International, a space that, uh, that enables business owners to work together to market mm. their, whatever they are doing. So I think that in, on this platform, where I'm already a launch director, I'm already a leader, we shall work with different fraternities, CASITA, uh, the different, to make sure, because one of the challenges that I have found in the community is that people are there saying, whatever we are doing, has no market. Of course, my first question is, if it has no market, why do it? Mm. Why, do, why, do, why do you engage in it if it has no market? So we shall continue to work with our people yeah. to guide them, to make sure that whatever they are doing is innovative and it can find both market here and market abroad. Right. One of the things I'm pushing is agricultural value addition. Mm. Pastor, you know that I have innovated a, a baking, a gluten-free flour that is not wheat at all. So I, 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 I tested your products. So you've I, tested my products, yes, but so. we keep improving. So yes. what am I saying? Can we, my friend in Kayunga, and now I've met her. One of the amazing things that I've met in this political space is the networks. I would do anything to be in this space because it has connected me to all the honorables. Now in Kayunga, I already have a network. When we work, whether I'm a member of parliament for Kampala or not, I have a network of uh, Agatha. We can say how, because unfortunately, I also come from Kayunga. So we can say, what can we do to add value mm. to pineapple? Because one of our richest uh, uh, wealth is the pineapple. We have mm. the sweetest pineapple. Mm. But w during the season, the, the price is way low. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, off season, it's way high. What can we do to add value? You know, mm. so mm. this space has given me a lot of connections that I hope and I will use to make sure that we continue influencing right. the community. Right, yeah. we're going to be breaking shortly, but before we get to that, um, that little break, mm -hmm. uh, to continue with more questions on the other side of the break, yes. um, I just wanted just to tease out this question is, um, um, I'm already, you know, I love this conversation. I can see. Mm. Uh, both of you, like, win or no win, yes. we have a vision yeah. for our people. Yes. We yes. love to engage our people. Yes. Mm. And in your opinion, just yes. quickly, a few seconds, each mm. one of you, I mean, I see you people, you're so passionate about being in leadership. In yes. Yes. Mm. Why is that many Christians we don't, what do you think, that we don't want to go into that space? Agatha. Okay. What do you think? Uh, uh, one of the reasons, as a Christian, Initially, myself, I think I can term myself as in that you caliber also. of people. Yes. I used to never really want to get into politics. First of all, in, my, in nature, I am a reserved person. So now I see the political uh, arena of people who can be able to be very outspoken, people who can uh, use propaganda, there's a lot of malice, lies. Mm -hmm. You couldn't connect yourself to this mm -hmm. because you'd be like, that is not me. Yes. <laughs> but um, when I came to understand 
that the real politics is about service. That actually the people who vote you need you to help them get their voice out there. Mm -hmm. that, the, that, that the space you get into parliament can help change so many lives. Mm -hmm. I changed my perspective about politics. Mm -hmm. I actually now started thinking in this other direction. And I said, yes, I can do something for these people because it's about the heart. Yes. We are forgetting that. You can be a politician with a heart of malice. You will not serve these people. Those are the politicians you hear that to gain the to the echo. To gain the to the echo. That is the culture <laughs> type, around eh? eating. And it yes. is very wrong. Surprisingly, mm. voters vote on such issues without getting into the deep, real f meaning of this uh, vote, casting their vote to the person who will give them the, the development that they need. Right. So um, after changing my perspective, after knowing that I'm doing this for Christ, and I'm not offended by anyone, what you think about me, I had to get from that, because now that was in humanity. I changed and my perspective. It got biblical, and here I am in politics, actually enjoying it. I'm loving this conversation, and I can see both of you are so passionate about politics, and um, you want to serve your people, which is really a blessing, because we are here to serve our people. But unfortunately, many Christians don't want to get into this political space. Mm. Now, when we come back, I want us to tease out that question. Why do Christians avoid political leadership? We shall be right back. How do I stay true to my virtues as I lead? I think, uh, I feel and I believe that um, keeping, keeping in communion with God and uh, always remembering that uh, my leadership and everything that, and, and, and every place I'm at and every role I play has been uh, presented to me by God. The Bible helps one stay true to their virtues. Uh, one of my mainest virtues is honesty and integrity and that is emphasized a lot in the Bible and it talks about with how we do our things being to the glory of God. Understanding that leadership is a blessing from God and using it as a tool to realize that this is God entrusting you with people's lives. That way you know that honesty and all your other virtues have to be key because it's God you are Basically, you just have to have them at your fingertips. Them being your virtues, uh, uh, basically your moral kind of law or your moral kind of contact that drives your behavior. One of the things that a leader should understand is that it's very hard for them to please everyone. So however much you're trying to have integrity, there's a party that is going to be hurt and there's a party that is not going to be hurt. So at the end of the day, as a leader, if you're an honest person and you're a person that has a lot of integrity, then you have to stick to it. Come what may, it has to happen. Otherwise, you're going to cease to be a leader. You're just going to be a people pleaser. I always want to remind myself of what my virtues are, what my values are, and then follow the process. But other than that, I always keep note. I'm always walk because people could just come and sweep you off your feet. So for me, it's basically about first knowing who I am and what I stand for before I step into any other thing. Us as Christians, uh, how to be, show an example that politics is not a dirty game, is us going back to the basics and the core of politics, which is leadership. And leading with, with, uh, with, uh, with integrity, thus showing an example to everyone out there that, you know what, politics is not just politics. It's not just a dirty game, but also it's a panel for us as uh, children of God or Christians to show the world that, you know what, leadership is a place for us to serve the people of God. And yes, politics has been viewed as a dirty game because that's what we know and that's what we've been shown for a very long time. So if Christians stopped being timid about it and decided to stand out and start being leaders, maybe then people would view politics as a good thing, actually. I think Christians should really get involved in politics because I think their point of view can make the world a better place. The game changer would be championing a Christ-centered culture in politics because um, there is uh, so much that is happening and, and we see it each and every other time. And um, it is really not biblical, it's not morally right and everything round about the place. 
So being able to champion a Christ-centered culture, and that is being responsible. Christians in those places can really do a lot because you know that you're not just serving men, you are serving God. You are not just doing things for the sake, you're doing things because you are serving God. And with that in mind, everything round about you will have to be influenced by what the scriptures actually say. Welcome back from the break. Now, before we went into the break, there was this question, why aren't many Christians involved in political leadership? And that's what we're going to talk about right now. I'm going to start with you, Agatha. Why aren't many Christians like you? And you told me earlier that actually you stood for a political position before and you did not go through. Yeah. Congratulations, you didn't give up. <laughs> yes. There are many who begin the journey and they give up. Mm. Why are there many Christians involved in politics? What is that? Okay. What is it in your view? First of all, it, uh, it comes back to an individual. You, there is a lot of intimidation okay. in the political arena. If you are of uh, less courage, you may you not faint want... Hearted. You're faint-hearted. <laughs> yes. You may not want to go in there. Maybe that's one of the reasons, because I believe there are so many reasons why people, or like Christians, we are not there. But secondly, there is the point of politics is a dirty game. Right. There is that way they have already pictured or dressed the political arena, right. and I believe it is wrong. It's because we are letting the people go there, the people who play the dirty go there. Otherwise, as Christians, we are seated by our own selves, trying to pray and fast, waiting for God to do this and that. But a God, our God is a God of action, right. miracles, signs, and wonders. Right. And we need to go into the arena to express ourselves and stand up for the kingdom agenda. Right. The, yeah, that's why I believe some people are not there for so many reasons. But as for me, initially, I was not there because of uh, the same reasons. But when I change my perspective, my thinking, Romans 12, 1 to 2, yes. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. I had to renew my mind. I, need to, I had to get another strategy in how I'm going to impact the people and for what reasons. When you get the why, then you could join politics. Yes. Yeah, my why is to extend God's kingdom here on earth through the politics. Oh, that's very good. Yes. So there's this idea of there's a fear because it is not easy. That's a mm. fact. It's true, <laughs> true. Standing for political position is not for the faint-hearted. It's true. But our God is bigger than any fear that can be brought away. Yes. I like what you said, um, and it reminds me of this. We have a philosophy at Ototo, I think from Pastor Gary, when I think was having this conversation with God, mm. and I think God asked him, who do you think owns community? And then he thought it was the bill of the community and wrong answer. The government, wrong answer. And then the right answer was God owns community because sure. God created everything. Mm. And the next question that if God owns community, who does God give that community to? <clears throat> His people. Yes. Now, if God has entrusted us with this space called Kampala, Kayunga, yes. his people, the yes. church, mm. and we just sit and do nothing, mm. I think we are not exercising stewardship mm. for the spaces that God has given yes. to us. It's and um, I, I think that is a game changer for most of us. When I heard that, I'm like, wow, yeah, this is God's business. Mm. God's business. Mm. I need to be in God's business rather than watch mm. and other people take and then we begin to complain that things are not um, happening yeah. the right way. So, uh, Rebecca, yes. why do you think many Christians are not engaged in this political space? Um, we have this feeling or thinking that uh, politics is worldly. And mm. for us, yeah. we, are spiritual. We, are, we are spiritual. Mm -hmm. Getting involved in politics is so ungodly. Right. Mm -hmm. I always tell people that some of us, some people who are not here, are so spiritual to be of any earthly good. <laughs> <laughs> you right. know? Because uh, you've, you've said it right that uh, God has given us this space. It is our space. We are the children of the kingdom. Right. And we are, all we are doing is to implement his agenda. The Father's kingdom. Yes. yes. The, the Father's agenda. Right. 
if as Christians, if we don't get involved in this space, we've still made a choice. I always tell people that whether you vote oh, no. or not vote, because you think that voting or standing for a political position is worldly or voting is uh, worldly, you've still voted. You've still made a choice. And uh, it's, it's so painful that if we don't get involved in this space, the people that we don't want to be in that space, they're going to go, mm. they will stand for political office, they will make laws, will abide by those laws. If you don't, you'll end up in prison. Now, you know, you're saying as if it's futuristic. Actually, it's already happening here. Mm -hmm. If you don't stand, somebody's already there. They're yes. already there. If you're not making the right laws, somebody's already making the laws that yes. are going to be against yes. you. Yeah. So basically, yes. we not going into that space mm. does not mean that space is unoccupied. It's There's occupied. somebody else occupying Absolutely. it. And probably but who is right. occupying? Exactly. Who is occupying? that space. Yes. Are they children of the kingdom or are they going to bring systems of the world? You know, politics is not bad as in, in itself as politics. Yeah. Um, I'm a political scientist. And when you look at politics, politics is who gets what, when and how. It's about lies and all that. But I'm saying about the science of governing the people. Right. That's what I'm talking about. That's politics. That is politics. So what we need to do is the systems are already there. But who is in parliament, for example, as a system? Who is in the judiciary as a system? Who is the councillor? Because Uganda as a nation already has set its system of governance, which is so beautiful. Right. Uganda has got, is one of the countries that has got the best laws. Our problem is who do we send mm. to govern or to run the system. Right. So my prayer and deep desire that for this one more time, for this time, we as children of the kingdom, right. we will get into that space yes. and make sure that we implement, we run the Father's agenda right. of governing his people right because right. it so, is his business. I see you're saying that there's no secular spiritual. Yeah. Oh, yes, we are in the world, mm. but God has called us to influence the, to world, influence the yes. world with his gospel, Absolutely. Mm. but also practicing servant leadership, serving yes. his people, governing them the way Jesus would yes. right now here on earth. Yes. Now, and I think a uh, final question for this segment is going to be this one. How can Christians be engaged in politics, mm. in your opinion? What do you think what Christians can do to get engaged? Okay. I, I believe that every Christian should engage. That's number one. Mm -hmm. You can engage as a politician themselves. You can engage as one who supports a politician. Right. Yes. For both financially, you can support in mo emotionally and also part of the journey. There's a lot that is in politics that anyone can be a part of this journey. Like we have the election day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have uh, voting and casting these votes, you can cast a vote to me, but also you can guard that vote. Right. See, because we are dealing with so many people, the vote rigging is the order of the day. Wow. A genuine vote can be stolen, but if we have Christian people getting out there to even guard these votes, mm. that is even better. A Christian can compose a song for you. <laughs> that can be catchy, you know. There's a lot that we can do together as Christians, but I'd, I'd call upon all Christians to come and join this because right. it is for the good of the kingdom agenda. Right, that's very good. Rebecca, the independent candidate. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, before I even say anything, uh, it's uh, important to note that uh, not all of us, we are not, all of us are not called to stand for political office. Yes. But like uh, Agatha has said, we can all participate in the political process. process. That's right. Yep. So uh, I'm an independent candidate, for example, I'm standing. It takes courage. Right. Sometimes I touch myself and say, eh, Becky, you're really courageous. You are. Eh? <laughs> you are courageous. <laughs> I'm very Both courageous. Both of you, you are courageous. I look at myself, I'm like, eh, I'm traversing the whole of Kampala yes. for the glory mm. of God. That's right. And uh, how do we, how, how can the church, because when I talk about Christians, I'm talking about the church. Right. How do we participate? I'm an independent candidate. It means unlike my friend Agatha who has got NRM from downstairs at the, at the village <laughs> level, 
I will need people to guard my votes. I need 2,000 people. 2,000 people. This is where I'm calling upon the church. The, the saints system. of God. The to the cell system. <laughs> to, uh, we have cells everywhere. To sign up, to be trained. Yes. To be able to guard the votes. I need a polling assistant. One from church and then another from the community because we need to partner. In right. that way, we influence them. You know, that's number one. Of course, I need money. I need money. I need money because I realize, not for, for giving out, but Pastor, do you know that 10,000 shillings can give me 10 posters? 10,000 shillings can give me 10 posters. Wow. So uh, as you see right now, my posters are there, but they are not as much. You know, just 10,000, contribution of 10,000 shillings could make all the difference. Wow. The people who are going to guard the votes, they need to get lunch. We need to be able to feed them. Who is going to do that? I'm counting on the church to participate. Right. I need prayers. There's a time I saw you, I don't know whether, I, there's a time when I posted that six of my key coordinators, yes. one of them, the father was sick and admitted on blood transfusion. One of my coordinators in uh, March India East landed into an accident that almost killed her at Clock Tower when she was coming for the meeting. My coordinator in, uh, in Intinda fell sick and she was, she was down for almost three weeks. My coordinator in, uh, in Kawempe, all of them were sick. So this is a battle. I was listening to one of, of the pastors who said that this is a spell. It is a spiritual, we are at the front battle for Kampala. And we are saying Kampala belongs to Jesus. Kampala belongs to the Lord. So I am requesting for prayer. Right. I'm requesting for prayer. I'm requesting for moral support. Right. There are times when you feel so discouraged mm -hmm. and you feel like you can't move on anymore. Is it the right thing to do? No. I know there are times when the Lord has told me, Becky, do you still doubt that I'm in this? And I said, no, Daddy, I know you are in this. Right. And then he says, let's keep going. Pick up your pieces and let's keep going. Right. So for me, we can all, we, they can vote. Yes. Please, for anything, I'm requesting the church pastor Please don't send the Holy Spirit to vote. <laughs> don't send the Holy Spirit to vote. Please, Pastor. Well, I don't know, whatever. Please, that one, I'm requesting the church, mm. whoever they are voting, we are nonpartisan, let them not send the Holy Spirit to vote. Let them go and cast their vote. Right. That is the way that uh, as church we can participate. That's right. Just to add on something. Yes, please yes. go ahead. Oh, um, my colleague Becky, when mm. she was talking about prayer, mm. I already have something that is going on in my district. Mm. Mm. Um, I've already partnered with the leader of the Born Again Pentecostal mm. Churches mm. in Kayunga District. Mm. Right. This is what the Holy Spirit led us to do. We are creating altars at every sub-county. Mm. Mm. Whenever we're entering into one sub-county, mm. we are going into prayer. We are mm. going into the spiritual warfare before anything mm. because we know who we are fighting against. Mm. It's not That's flesh right. and blood, right. but against principalities. So what we have done is that we are going to, um, we're going to put this altar out mm. there and it's mm. going to be kept fire burning mm. Eh? Mm. throughout the election, throughout even after. So yes. you can see that it's not stopping here. This right. is going ahead and it's just going to bring the change that we need. Right. That's why I'm just That's giving this idea good. to my very good friend, Becky. Yeah. You and can do this just by looking for the right people mm. to work with. So as we've said, this is God's children influencing the world. Yes. And you cannot just go by the power of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You have to depend on God. That's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying, how can the church get involved? You're saying we need financial support. People need to support you financially. Yes, that is okay? very true. And um, you need people who are going to be your agents. agents. Mm -hmm. Polling agents. Polling agents. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's another one. There's this idea of, pray, of prayer. Prayer. That prayer. is true. That is powerful. I think prayer is very... Actually, that's the beginning point. You begin... Mm. Uh, by praying, and then voting. <laughs> the actual voting. Say, let's not send the Holy Spirit. Let's yeah. not send the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then, Pastor, of course, the other thing is, before you get to the polling station, this is a scientific yes. campaign. Mm. 
Mm. Make sure that at least you've mobilized 50 people to come with you. Right. Mm. Let's mobilize. So, mobi that's another one. Now, yes. mobilize, mobilize other people to other come. Mobilize other people to come and vote. And vote. Yes. So, basically, what I'm hearing from you mm. is that as Christians, we have a part to play. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been called to become leaders. Yes. Stand. Yes. Mm. But standing, you need a group of people around you who are going to support you yes. in many ways, financially, mm. morally, mm. Uh, people who are going to be agents, people mm -hmm. who are going to go Realize. and knock on people's doors and yeah. every other thing because when the righteous are in authority, what happens? People, people rejoice. rejoice. People rejoice. Yes. Mm. And when the wicked are in authority, I mean, there is mourning people each and everywhere yeah. and it's time for us as Christians to go and actually take charge of God's community, yes. mm. God's people, because mm. ultimately we are here to serve his people. Yes. And I think I had that complete in your, yes. as we talked earlier, you want to serve the people of Kayunga. You want to yes. serve the people mm. of Kampala, whether you're winning or not winning, but mm. we are praying that you go yes. through, because when you go through, you are able to influence yes. at a higher and higher level. Well, ladies, yes. I want to say thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. Yes, yes. And I'm going to allow each one of you, is there any one last thing you'd love to say to everybody who is a part of this past sex marriage? Yes. Okay. Mm. Anything? Nothing? Anything? Whatever? Something, yes. Um, thank you, viewers, for watching us. I'm so glad to be hosted. And I believe that this goes out there to any Christian that is waiting for an opportunity to stand. I had some friends of mine who actually had gone into the race and pulled out. Oh. You can see that, but I just want to encourage people out there to take part in serving God's kingdom because we all have a calling to, to participate mm -hmm. in taking care of, uh, of the kingdom of God here on earth yes. and to represent him in whatever that we do. Right. I call upon all supporters of Kayunga District Come and vote for Agatha Nalubama, woman member of parliament, 2021-2026. Right. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, that's wonderful. Viewers, uh, thank you for watching us. And I want to thank the management, the, the church, of, the Watoto Church, for making this possible. Namgwanya uh, Rebecca Robina, the next Kampala woman member. Of parliament, I always add Omu what mm. asovola, <laughs> you know, for a pro, for proper health care system, for employment, for a decent education, for 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 youth skilling, for home based industries, for early learning development for the most vulnerable children of our community. Namguanya Rebecca, by the grace of God, we are here to serve. We are here to make a difference. So, Kampala, men and women, ladies and gentlemen, please send your in laws, outlaws, your enemies, all of them mm -hmm. to vote for Namguanya Rebecca as the next Kampala woman member of parliament. That is so wonderful. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, <laughs> Agatha. And uh, I hope you've been enriched in this um, conversation as we've been talking to, um, I've been talking to these wonderful ladies who are standing for uh, political uh, office. Now remember, as for Toto Church, we are non-partisan, and that is why I can invite people, an independent, an NRA, NRM um, uh, candidate. We were expecting a noob candidate, but something happened and they did not make it uh, today. <laughs> but we are non-partisan because we believe the church is here to influence every area in society. Remember, let's pray for our brothers and sisters who are standing for political office. Let's pray for them. Mm. Let us support them financially, even emotionally. Mm. Let's be a part of the group of men and women who are polling agents, who are walking and going each and everywhere to make sure they do that kind of work. Mm. Vote. Remember, vote. Don't send the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Don't send angels. <laughs> remember <laughs> to vote. But even as I conclude, I want to say this. All of us as Christians, we have a God-ordained responsibility, according to 1 Timothy chapter 2, mm -hmm. to pray for all our leaders that we may live peaceable lives. Mm -hmm. I hope you've been blessed. Mm -hmm. God bless you, and have a beautiful evening.
Let justice fill this nation. Have mercy, Jesus, please forgive our sin. Take the heart of stone away. Teach our hearts to bow before your name. Lord, hear from heaven, draw 